into space. For more information, log on to www.nasa.gov slash Cassini. This is exciting. This is what we all live for, working on projects to do things like this. It seems a little risky, and that's what gives it the excitement. Of course, we know that it's not, but for something that is this far away and to be flying by at 50 kilometers, which is not a whole lot more than the distance from here to my home, uh, that's close. That's fun. That's why we do this. The Mystery here is what is the mechanism that is creating these geysers? What is the environment underneath the surface that enables these geysers to be there? Is there liquid water or is it some other mechanism that wouldn't require liquid water in order to form the geysers? That's a very key question. That's a question that very much excites the scientists because the whole issue of liquid water is very closely tied to the question of is this an environment that could support some form of life. Last time when we flew by Enceladus the focus was on the fields and particles instruments to detect just what the composition, particle density, particle distribution was. This time the focus is going to be on the optical instruments that is to say the cameras and the spectrometers. So we're going to be oriented differently so that we're looking directly down at the surface where all of these tiger stripes are. The size of the particles and the density of the particles is such that it is just not a risk. The spacecraft is fully capable of impacting these very small micron size particles. So I'm, I'm comfortable with what we're doing. We're going to keep right on going after this flyby is done and we're going to do it again. New Hubble Spectrograph Prepped for Shuttle Mission The Cosmic Origin Spectrograph